hello guys you are welcome back again to my channel trust you are doing great the last time i uploaded the first part of this tutorial and now this is the second part as you can see i have attached the yoke to the upper part of the blouse and for the waist i'm going to be facing the two right sides together that is the lining and the fabric then they sewing the two short sides leaving the long side open and when i was done i notched the both sides then i turned to the right side like so then thereafter i top stitched This is what you have after top stitching. Now it's time to join it with the upper part of the blouse or the bustier. First of all, you notch the midpoint like so. Then you align the two with the right sides facing each other. After which you sew. This is what you have after sewing and I did this for the both panels and now I have sewn the both panels. It's time to take the measurement of the basque waist. So on one of the sides I got 24 inches. So meaning on both sides, I'll be having like 48 inches. Now to get the peplum part of the blouse, you fold this fabric into four like so. So like I said earlier, 24 on each side, so on both sides is 48. So I'm adding extra 10 inches for pleats so 58 divided by 6.28 that is 9.2 you then mark 9.2 all the way from end to end like the two folded ends then you can use your free hand to join the points or use your curve ruler It's time to determine the length of the peplum. So I just measured mine that way. So I felt that length would be enough. So you can determine the length of yours. It's totally up to you. So I'm using the length of 10 inches, which I also mark from one edge to the other edge. You connect the points from one end to the other end then you cut out you have this after cutting out the next step now is to shape on the peplum and that's because of the waistline it is not round but triangular so you will shape on it to fit in that waistline so what i did was to transfer the measurement of the waist then from there i created my curve I'm going to be cutting off that extra part
when you are done trimming then you open up the two sides so that you have two pieces for both sides this is what we are going to pleat in such a way that it will fit in to the waist I have also cut out the lining then use bias along the edges this I did for the two pieces so it's about time to pleat you pleat it in such a way that it will fit in to the waist so first of all you get the center which I just did from the center you pleat both sides so that your pleats will be equal You can determine the kind of pleats you want. So what I did here was more like a kissy pleat. While arranging your pleats, ensure to always measure at intervals. So after getting my desired length, I'll do the same pleats on the other side. I'm done with splitting the two pieces. I'm going to be attaching the pieces to the body of the blouse with the right sides facing each other. It is easier to pin first before sewing. I'm done attaching the two pieces to the blouse. So it's about time to sew. You are going to be sewing it round. Here is it after sewing. So, what is left now is the sleeve. I have the tutorial of this blouse sleeve on my channel. I'm going to be dropping the link in the description box. Kindly watch. I did a balloon sleeve as you can see. So the next thing to do is to attach it to the blouse with the right sides facing each other. You align the sleeve cap like so. Can you see that? Then you can hold with pin. Then you sew all the way down on both sides and that will be all. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Please, if you are coming across this channel for the first time, do hit the subscribe button and turn on your post notification bell to enable you get notified whenever I upload new videos. Do like, comment and share my videos. See you next time. Bye.